we were doing the measures of concentration of a solution and and we had done till parts per million now we come to a concept called mole fraction okay and as the name suggests it is nothing but the fraction of the total mole that a component is occupying so mole fraction mole fraction of a component component is equal to the mole of the component i mean number numbers of number of moles of the component of the component in question divided by the total number of moles of all the constituents okay it is denoted by x and in the in the subscript you write what you write the you write the not necessarily you write that component whose mole fraction you are finding out so suppose suppose it is maybe nitrogen then you can write that okay so so this is a standard way of representation of mole x x denotes the mole fraction so suppose if we have if we have two components or or say if we have three components components each with with n1 n2 and n3 moles respectively okay now if that is the case what is the mole fraction of component 1 i'll write it like that x1 is equal to the number of moles of that component that is 1 divided by the total number of moles so that so that okay how about x2 it is n2 divided by n1 plus n2 plus n3 if we have x3 we have n3 upon n1 plus n2 plus n3 and and a remarkable thing about since it is a fraction right it is the total fraction so what happens if you sum them up it will give you 1 and you can uh, you can you can see that here so x1 plus x2 plus x3 since the denominator in all of them are the same their numerators add up so n1 plus n2 plus n3 and and the denominator is already n1 plus n2 plus n3 so that gives us 1 fine if there are say i components or n components if there are n components then then say the mole fraction of then the mole fraction of the of the ith component is is x i is equal to n i divided by summation or or i'll call n1 plus summation normally i write we write j as the running variable whenever we are taking the sigma 
here what I do uh, i as i as the running variable but since i is already a component so I write it j j is equal to j is equal to 1 to n correct this notation you must be familiar with right so this is your mole fraction for the nth component of the ith component why are we emphasizing the why are we emphasizing on the mole fraction because because mole fraction mole fraction concept mole fraction concept is used in is used in number one that we'll soon see in calculating the vapor pressure of liquids okay vapor pressure of solutions okay even or or not necessarily solutions uh, yeah solutions Liquids also have vapor pressure, but then there is no no concept of mole fraction out there, right? So, so the vapor pressure of pressure of solutions, and then if you remember from your class eleventh, it is used to calculate the partial pressure of a mixture of gases. Hmm? Partial pressure of a mixture of gases. Hmm? Correct. Partial pressure of a mixture of gases. We understand what partial pressure is. Hmm? Partial pressure is the, the amount of pressure that will be applied by a particular gas in a mixture of gases. The, the, the pressure applied by say one of the gases first gas if it was occupying the same volume as the mixture of the gases is occupying you understand the point okay so what was the contribution of that okay that depends actually on the mole fraction of the of the of the component and and we'll soon see why it comes. It comes from the ideal gas equation. There is nothing great about it. Okay. There is nothing so great about it. Okay. And uh, in 11th, uh, um, in a chapter, in the ideal gas chapter, we'll actually be doing that mathematically and seeing why, why it is. So that's why the concept of mole fraction has come into being. It's not just for nothing that, that we are also saying that, okay, so this is also one of the ways of expressing no. Okay.